Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. It's the Rich Eisen Show Basketball Podcast. Hey. We're back. Adam and TJ and the NBA is back, and it's great to see you guys. It's been a long off season. Season two, is that what we're calling this? Season yeah. two? 2.0. The deuce. <laughs> what's up, guys? Happy NBA tip-off. Good to see you guys. What's going on, man? I mean, I see you every day, but. <laughs> Happy the season is back. But we're yeah. back. It was a long NBA off season. Uh, so much happened. Uh, but now we're back. NBA tip off last night. Boston beats Philadelphia, and the Warriors have their ring ceremony and take out the Lakers. Who, <laughs> oh my gosh, they're going to be terrible. Let's just start with the with the whole uh, Golden State stuff. Everything that happened with Draymond Green and Jordan Poole and the video coming out and the non suspension. I guess he was fine. Then he took some time off, and then he released that bizarre kind of twenty one minute documentary that aired on TNT like so maybe they're complicit now because he works with them sometimes uh it seemed like he wasn't that remorseful more so just that maybe he tried to play it off like he was the victim because we all saw it I don't know what you guys think of that and and this whole situation that's gone on in the last couple of weeks uh with Golden State Adam what's your take on all this Okay, so you guys know that I am a Draymond Green apologist. I'm a huge fan of his. I always have been. He's one of those guys that reminds me of Dennis Rodman, where you hate him if he's not on your team. You love him if he's on your team. That being said, what he did was absolutely wrong. It was one of the worst things you can do. But at the same time, I think people are overreacting to it in a weird way. You know, Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr in the face back in the 90s. So this is not unprecedented. Teammates have done this to their teammates before. And I think Clay was talking about it last night that winning cures all. And if this team goes on a you know a five, ten game winning streak, I think eventually this will be forgotten. He obviously owes the team and Jordan Poole an apology, which I'm sure he's he's done. But I think that the Warriors will be fine. And Joe Lacob was interviewed and, and they asked him why he didn't uh, suspend Draymond for the first game. And he said that he earned that ring ceremony. And I agree with him on that. Draymond's part of the original core. They've won four championships with him and he earned that ring ceremony. I don't think he should have been suspended for that game. So I agree with what they did. I think everything's going to be fine with this team. And it's a learning experience for them. I think they'll be fine. Man, really? You think, yeah. you think this is just nothing? It's ultimately just nothing. Ultimately, no. I, I think Jordan Poole, he got his money. He got a huge contract after this happens. He's going to be making million, thir- like over $30 million a year. And Draymond knows his role. He plays it perfectly. And, yeah, I just don't think it's going to be that big of an issue long term. I really don't. TJ, I always love your perspective <laughs> on this stuff because it's not, you know, you know, it's not as kind of reactionary and as kind of, I don't know, however my take on things are, you know. Like, you kind of – Take a minute, pause, think things through, and I, and I appreciate that about you. Even though it's you know much different than than how I normally go <laughs> about things, because you know half the time I'm doing the thing, and half the time I, I kind of really believe that. But how are you seeing this whole whole Draymond thing? Do you agree with Adam that it's ultimately kind of nothing? Honestly, okay. So when it first happened, you hear about it, right? You're like, okay, whatever, something happens. Then you see the video, and it's just like, damn, bro. Like, you jawed this dude. It looks like if the wall wasn't there, he might have been knocked out. So, of course, now the video pops out. Now there's uproar and outrage, right? And it, But it seemed like most of the uproar situated around the fact, like, how this video get out? It's like people seem like they were more mad that the, the evidence was released to the public than of the actual crime that was committed. Right. That being said, I had an opinion. And then over the days that went by, Poole got his money he seemed to, I don't want to say he seemed to forgive Draymond because his statement didn't really seem like he did. He was just willing to like kind of like move on past it. But and then you get all of these other athletes who come out and tell you that, hey, man, happens all the time, happens all the time. So it's just funny because people are acting like it happens all the time. Like every day somebody's getting their jaw right. Every rocked. single team, it, it, every it, single it, day in practice, and every single dudes sport. are fighting, every single sport, but someone's getting knocked out. Yeah. Now, now here's the deal though, right? So thinking about that, I look at it this way. Okay. If every athlete, the majority of them, which by the way, how many athletes have really damned Draymond for this? If you think about it, 
not a whole I lot, really right? Heard anyone, yeah. yeah, like there's been a few people, sports writers, analysts, and stuff that like they took. It seems as almost like they took, you know, took it more personally than Jordan like, Poole did. Like they got hit, you know. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is look, if Jordan Poole's not making a big deal about this, and the Warriors are fine with it. I'm not going to sit here and like carry over some fake like outrage just you know to talk about it on the air like yeah. if they don't care then I surely don't care so I've moved on past it and just simply because I was watching a video today with Steve Smith on Shannon Sharp's podcast and Steve Smith talked about how he backhanded a teammate in film session because he dropped the pass and him and the guy I don't know who it was somebody said it was Ray Ruth I'm not sure he and the guy didn't like each other already Mushin Muhammad's running the film room. Steve drops a pass. The guy tells Mushin to run it back, and Steve goes, now I'm already heated because he's making me look bad. So Steve Smith backhanded him. So I go, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, maybe they're right. And then the best thing is watching Lamar Odom and Shannon Sharp. Lamar's talking about the time. Remember Charles Oakley punched Jeff McGinnis? Do you remember this story? No. no. Okay, so years ago, Clippers are playing. They're in the shoot-around. Okay. Charles Oakley came out. Apparently, there was beef between him and Jeff McGinnis. I, Jeff I, McGinnis? Yeah, I've got to remember wow. what. I've got to look it up. I probably should have. I didn't even think about well, it. Well, it was either, either money it had or, to be mo- or girls. Money or girls, yeah, it's right? The That's the only two things. <laughs> and apparently, and he did. He punched Jeff McGinnis. So this is kind of like a known thing. But Lamar Odom made it seem like, yo, he effed him up, right? And then Shannon's like, well, why didn't you guys do anything? And Lamar was like, yo, I was with it. I was cussing and everything. And he goes, Charles Oakley looked at him and goes, L.O., I told him I was going to put punishment on his body. And then Lamar said when he heard that, he goes, you know what? Let me just back up (laughs) out of this. So you know what? I I guess I'm just saying the punch, as civilized human beings, we sit here and go, that's awful. That's terrible. Maybe in the... In the world of sports, it's okay. And one last thing, because I know I've been talking way too long. No, no, it's fine. We're so mad about this, right? Two days later, hockey season starts, and the biggest thing in hockey are two guys beating the crap out of each other, and everybody's excited. And everybody's game, and they're not teammates. But my point being, it's like it's just so weird how, like, in this one sport, it's praise, and then that's two guys beating the crap out of each other, and in this one, a guy gets punched, and we're ready to like throw our hands in here. I just think for me, it's. It's Draymond's stature on the team. Yeah. I understand that he's their quote-unquote enforcer. That's not really a thing in today's NBA, but like for that team, he plays a certain role. He's, you know, he's such a he's such an antagonist. Like, you know, we know famously he got kicked LeBron in the groinal region <laughs> and got suspended for an for a finals game. He kicked him in the ding ding. And and so but he's supposedly one of your team leader. You mentioned one of the core guys, you yeah. know, he's got the four rings. He should know better. Like you're supposed to be a leader, and you're in here knocking a dude out because, you know, they leak a story to Chris Haynes about how Jordan Poole's been acting a certain way because he wants to get paid. Like, Jordan Poole's better than you right now as a player, and he's more important to the future of the Warriors than you are. You may not be on the team next year. Like, you're in the last year of your deal. You have a player option for next year. You're 33, 34 years old. You might be gone and you're knocking this dude out because it's his turn to get paid? Well, we don't know if it, that's exactly the reason why he did it. But also, Draymond's the enforcer. I think we – did we talk about this earlier, TJ, where it's like don't step up to the guy who has been known to fight. Right. But who else has he fought, though? You know, it's, it's like – I'm just saying he got in Kevin Durant's face. Yeah. He gets in the fight, ago, but there's but like, no – like, But that's it, his It's thing. a lot of woofing, right? An enforcer to me Talks is Oakley, lot. right? An enforcer to Talks. me is Xavier McDaniel. Right. You're right, Adam. Those guys don't necessarily exist anymore. So I don't know if he's necessarily an enforcer, but he's the, the you know, he's the woofer on the team for sure. And look, I, I take it back. Apparently he is about that life because he did <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know. But in the end, I mean, I guess it's just like I, I just feel like – from a management perspective, now they're enabling this type of behavior because there was ultimately no punishment. No, he got punished, though. He got fined the match. He got fined. He got fined like fine what? Oh, my God, $50,000 <laughs> to Draymond Green. But, he has that in his glove box. You want to really show this guy that, hey, dude, this is messed up. You shouldn't do that to your teammate. We're trying to repeat. 
tough shit. You don't get to go to the the ring ceremony. Or guess what? You can show up to the ceremony. You're not playing in the game, and in fact, you're out ten games. Yeah, that like would do make, something. I think that would make sense if it was a guy who's the second year in the league, like James Weissman or somebody like that, or Kuminga. But when you're talking about Draymond Green, without Draymond Green, this franchise never wins one championship. So you have to consider that as part of you. You the don't. Argument. You don't. You don't. I think you. I do, think you kind do. Of. He knocked he gets special out privilege his over the teammate other players. cold. It doesn't matter, though. Cold. He still should be able to get special privilege over the other guys because, like I said, they're nothing without him. He what, what, if, what, if, what if Jordan Poole has got a concussion, undiagnosed, lingering symptoms? What if he broke his jaw and suddenly he's out half the season? Now, I think then, then broken jaw. Like, Draymond I, Green is more upset that like, – watch, his, watch the, his video. Look, look, at the, look at the clips. I have he's no interest more, in watching he, 21 minutes of that. He's more mad that the video was released, just like Steve Kerr seemed more upset by this. Just like he's what I said earlier. He's playing the victim. Like, I was wronged. No, you were the one who did the wrong. But what about the situation, like I said, with Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr? And Steve Kerr probably knew, learned from that situation where he was the guy getting didn't, punched. Didn't knock out him cold. But he punched him in the face, though. And now yeah. Steve Kerr, coincidentally, is the coach of the Warriors. And he knows how to handle this. He saw how the Bulls handled it. Draymond Michael Green ain't suspended. Michael Jordan. Yeah, I think bringing I'm not up Michael Jordan, Jordan to this yeah, is just like... I'm yeah. not saying he's Michael Jordan, but I'm saying he's been an important figure in their core championship team. I think it's I'll give so you that. insane. You about, true. I, I, yeah, of course. But I think just think it's so insane how the Warriors and their management just has played this off as nothing. So, Chris, I think you should adopt the T.J. Jefferson philosophy, I which I just so. said. If I, they're I not mad so about, it, about it, then I'm not going to wait. Like, and I realized this the other day. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time getting upset because it does. It's not my team. It's not affecting me. I said my piece. Yeah, I think I'm it's just, right. I, I guess it's I'm just looking wrong. at it from a, from kind of a human perspective. It's yeah, a like, human perspective. It's, it's crazy. Definitely wrong. And then, like I said, when when you got more people mad that we've seen it than. The actual act itself, that's strange to me, too. But I'm not going to figure out human beings, at least not in the next 20 minutes. So, you know what? If, if the Warriors are willing to move on, let me tell you something. It didn't look like anything was affecting them last night, right? Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, I guess that probably had more to do with their opponent as well. I, mean, <laughs> I know you can't wait to a, get a, this and dig a good, in. <laughs> a good transition here. Let's uh, let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, guys. How lo How long is this season going to be for them? <laughs> well, 82 games, yeah. you know. 82, 82 games. LeBron's going to be 160 years old by the time the season's over. 82 games in mid-April, but that's going to be the end, right? I mean, are <laughs> they even good enough to be the 10th seed in the West? Look, man, if everybody stays if, and if is the biggest word in the world when it comes to sports, but if they stay healthy, then, yeah, they should be a playoff team. Just Why? Because there's enough talent. Because a healthy, like I said. They if, have two players. A healthy Anthony Davis and a healthy LeBron James with a bunch of decent role players should be able to get you a playoff spot, I would assume. But the health issue is the thing, right? Because my man hasn't been able to stay healthy. Bo both bands. Well, LeBron, I, I, he gets the benefit of the doubt. Look at how many times he's missed games over injury well, over his I'm career. I'm saying the last like, two years has been a lot of missed games. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But, you know. I, I don't know. I, I feel like, man, I gave them the benefit of the doubt last year, too. I mean, <laughs> you really went. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So did I. And honest. they made the play in last year. They did. And they're worse this season. I don't know. It's early. It's early. LeBron One played game. 45 games two years ago, 56 games last year. Here's what I do like. Over though. under 56 and a half games for LeBron this season. Over. I'm going to go over also. I, I still think LeBron... He's still a top 10 player in the league. Yeah, he'll take some games off for quote-unquote load management. Yeah, why shouldn't he? But if it's a situation where he needs to play for them to get into the playoffs, he will be playing. Yeah, because trust me, LeBron does not not want to make the playoffs. No. Especially, like, imagine that. Imagine you become the all-time leading scorer yeah, in the NBA, and then you s game 82 is the end of your season. Like, that's not a good. I mean, look hey, work. look, look at the last couple of years of Kobe. They he was playing for nothing. Yeah, he was playing a, for pride. That's true. And money. Good point. I mean, at what point do the Russell Westbrook uh, trade rumors happen again? They're, they're, already they've happening. already started. 
Charles Barkley started at halftime last night. <laughs> By the way, Charles Barkley had a quicker uh, hook than Chris Brockman ever had. Which I've, is I've seen Chris it's Brockman shocking. want a player traded after like going into halftime. <laughs> Charles called for it before halftime, I think, like or right as halftime started. So it came on at halftime, and he was like, <laughs> "Just trade him now. <laughs> Just like put him out of his misery. Give him in a situation where he can go get all his numbers and start and play." I mean, Russ tried to claim that he got injured or strained his hammy. <laughs> Because he wasn't starting and had to come off the bench. Yeah, and so his body wasn't used to it. Yeah, his body don't know how to deal with that, <laughs> what Chris. What is that? That's like Adam being like, yo, Adam, we're going to move the phone bank to the desk out here in the studio. And you're just like, oh, my back. I'm used to sitting in the back and the, the cold and the temperature and or, the, and the way like, the computer's lined up. I oh, got my, injured. I, my eyes, it's so bright oh, out here. It was oh, dark out here. I don't back. know what it's, to do. Yeah. This Lakers so season is going to be a triumphant disaster, you know, and I'm going to enjoy every second. I'm looking at the roster right now, and yeah, you're probably. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to give benefit of the doubt. Here's my favorite thing. They're so bad. My guy, OG Pat Bev, who I've always told you, if he's on your team, yeah. you love him. If he's not, <laughs> you hate him. Uh, for some reason, during the offseason, Pat Bev start, you know, acting like he was number one on the call sheet. Like this man actually the other day was saying that how the media tries to kill his boy Russ and he needs him out there with him in the starting lineup. <laughs> like Pat Bev is God. like, you know, going for 19 and 10 a game or something. I, I love the dude, man. <laughs> but Scotty it's like, Pippen come on. Jr. got in the game last night. Yeah, makes me feel so old, by the way. <laughs> Scotty Pippen Jr. scored NBA points. That's incredible. You know, it's amazing. He spells his name with a Y. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay, then you're not junior. They're then. not junior. I agree. It's the whole Just point. The IE. That's weird. <laughs> well, it's kind of like LeBron, LeBron and Bronny in a way, kind of. Not really. Uh, it makes me laugh. Well, so no, because uh, so he's not LeBron James Jr., is yeah. he? Is yeah, he's he LeBron James Jr. Okay. I think so, he is, yeah. But yeah, he completely went away. He made Bronny. Like, he made that for himself. And I heard what, it. What? I, I heard an interesting theory. I was listening to another show this morning, and uh, they were talking about just how crazy it was. Like, why would you bring back Palenka? Like, what good moves has he done? Blah, blah, blah. What if Palenka is, like, playing this, like, 4D chess move of, like, entertaining trade offers for Anthony Davis this year so LeBron gets so mad at the roster around him, he doesn't want to come back. Because LeBron, the way his contract is set up, he can't be traded this season. He can only be traded in the offseason because of his extension. So, and then LeBron wants out, gets traded in the offseason to whoever ends up is in line to pick and draft Bronny, and then they get those picks back, so they kind of rebuild by trading LeBron and Anthony Davis because they know this season's a disaster and the championship window with these guys is, is definitely shut. This team that, can't win a title. I don't think that's how the Lakers operate, though. They don't look to these draft picks to to really rebuild, do they? Although, although no, I, I will say they they did with the potential Russell Westbrook trade. There were the rumors in the summer that the the Lakers were going to offer Russell Westbrook, and that the Pacers demanded two first round draft picks on top of that for Miles Turner and Buddy Hield. And at the last second, apparently it was like literally the last second. Uh, the Lakers decided that they couldn't do it because they didn't want to give up the, the first round draft picks, right. which I think is insane. insane. Miles Turner and Buddy Heald, I think, would be great fits for the Lakers. Yeah, along with Pat Bev, and then you got Lonnie Walker and none and these guys like, you know, Toscano Anderson. Like, that's a playoff team. Yeah, and, and Miles Turner can shoot threes is on top of rebounding and block and sh shooting. Like, the guy is a good player. And then Buddy Heald, he opens up space for the entire. Lakers team, so I just don't understand why they did not pull that trigger. And LeBron even might. said they they don't have shooters. Their 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 team isn't constructed around shooters. It's a and it's a weird team to build about around LeBron James when, like you said, he's still playing at a top ten level. He played great last night. I mean, maybe patting a little stats, but he had over thirty points and fourteen rebounds. Like he's still playing. It's LeBron James, man. We've never seen somebody play at this level at that age yeah. it's never been done before man and uh, it, it it's truly amazing i only wish that he would have i don't know gone somewhere other than the lakers <laughs> because you now i had to boo this man when he got here and i didn't want to have to boo lebron you but know it's kind of his fault also for totally but he won a title 100 so, and whether you like whether you think it's real or not he did get a ring out of here yeah so. no but i'm just saying like in terms of the move for westbrook 
that was what changed yeah. the trajectory of that franchise. Yep. And looking back, obviously, they should have kept Caruso. Well, it, kept it was e- it was ego. He thought he thought they could make it work. He thought they would fit somehow, and that Russ still had, you know, the 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 game to to win meaningful games and during the playoffs. And he just doesn't. Yeah, and 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 Russell Westbrook's a future Hall of Famer, one of the best players of all time. But he needs to stop with the ego, and he needs to accept yeah. a bench role. He can thrive as a sixth or seventh man off the bench, well, get his points, and I just don't understand why. His hamstrings, Adam, that's why. His hamstrings. He's, he's, not, used to, okay. he's yeah. not used to coming off you the got, bench. You hamstring. got two hamstrings. You know how it feels, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at the rest of the West here, TJ. Wait, uh, I'll say one more thing about the Lakers. Okay, go ahead. Just imagine if it, they wouldn't have traded B.I. and, and Jordan Clarkson. And Lonzo. And Lonzo. Well, they got all those and, guys for well, Anthony got, Davis. Yeah. But imagine, like, they don't get AD, and they keep B.I., and they keep, you know, Clarkson. Is this team better now? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know, the, but, and the thing is, is, like, LeBron. Because B.I. is, like, oh, he's, he's coming. Legit. LeBron he's LeBron didn't want to wait for these young kids to develop. Yeah, and, that, and that's, that's too bad. And that, but that's on LeBron, too. It's like, it was short-sighted. He was like, I want veterans around me who know how to, who already know how to win. But that may, I get it. I, and you can, of course, I totally get it. Obviously, you know. Anthony Davis is a top 10 player when he's fully healthy and at the height of his powers. Like, he looked really great last night. I thought Anthony Davis played really well. Uh, but, you know, LeBron didn't want to wait. He didn't want to wait for those kids to develop. And now look at them. They are, I mean, B.I. is a superstar. Yeah. New Orleans could be a big time sleeper this year uh, with C.J. McCollum and Zion is fully healthy. Zion looks great. Looks like he's lost some weight. Like, yeah. uh, I think Zion and James I, Harden went to the same Weight Watchers. Uh, dude, for real. Uh, like, I'm so excited to watch Zion play tonight. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, people Brooklyn. were writing him off. I remember last year people were, you know, because Jaw was balling. Yeah. So just so magnificent. Well, it, it just made the Zion stuff. Yeah, look. and people were like, well, Zion's so, falling off. And I'm like, bro, Zion never fell off. He just got hurt. Because when he's in there, he's putting up 26. And 11. 27. You know, he's. Seven. I mean, Zion is a machine. I can't wait. And, you know, the funny thing is, right, I was watching the interview with Zion, and they were talking about, like, are you a little nervous with your injuries? Like, when you go to the lane, are you, are you a little afraid? He goes, no, man. He goes, when I go up, I want to put somebody through the rim. And I'm like, oh, my God. Poster season is coming, fellas. <laughs> Just know that. Poster season is coming. All right? And, and you, dude didn't and, play and last you don't year. You want to be on it. Oh, man. He's got a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of ball. He's got a lot of ball inside of him that we haven't seen in a while, oh, and he's just ready to burst. Let's look at the rest of the West, TJ. Uh, Clippers not on the docket tonight, Wednesday. We're going to see them tomorrow against the Lakers uh, in their season opener. Mm-hmm. How jacked up are you? Well, let me put it this way. Are you more jacked up for the Clippers season, or is Kawhi just more jacked? Like, <laughs> well, like all, which is it? I told you, Kawhi looks swole. I told oh, yeah. you guys about a month ago. I asked you, I'm like, have you seen the claw? Because he is Buff Bagwell right now. He's swole. But the thing is, I've... Okay, you guys have seen... You've been down this road before. You've seen dogs, right? They've been abused, right? <laughs> and it, 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 it's the commercials. They come on. It's the sad piano. I will remember oh, God, Sarah you. McLaughlin. Stop. You're gonna Sarah get, McLaughlin's you're playing, and bro. the dog's in the rain. He looks all wet and sad because his owner chained him to a fence and yells and beats at him and doesn't feed him. I'm like the beat down dog, all right? For 20... This is year 23 of Clipper fandom for me. And I've gone through segment after segment of, like, listing all the Clipper curse stuff. On paper, this team Stacked. is phenomenal, right? Stacked. They We have depth. We're talented. We're stacked. We're every good thing you can say. We got a great coach. We got two superstar players. We got a guy who John Wall who's got something to prove. We got yeah. Mr. May, Reggie Jackson. But like that beat dog, bro. I, I've just I've just been like hit with a rolled up newspaper so much as a Clipper <laughs> Yo, fan. You didn't have to give up Kennard this offseason. Did not still have, have to... one of the Morris twins. Yes. Norman Powell's still there. Norman Powell's Covington. there. Like, by the way, Covington. Big shot Batum. Bob Covington. You got so many good shooters. You got so many good players. John Wall's coming off the bench. Who know their role. John Wall, perfect example. Max money guy. Takes less to come to the Clippers. Knows his role. He knows he's going to come off the bench. Well, he and, didn't know he was. He, we I actually, well, everyone we kind thought of, he was starting. We kind of assumed that he was yeah. going to be a six I think he because, thought he was. No, he, I, and Clipper world, we were like, we're all starting and Reggie's coming off the bench. Uh, so. Yeah, I understand. Totally. But a guy who can lead that second unit. Oh, man, yes. Why can't the Clippers be the one seed in the West? Like, Adam, talk me out of that. 
I'm not going to talk you out of that because I think absolutely they can. I think the only thing that can pre prevent them from that will be injuries. You have a guy like John Wall who hasn't really played in two years. Kawhi hasn't played in a year. So there's definitely injury risk involved. But to me, it's clearly that the Clippers and the Warriors are the two best teams to, to, to be in the West right now. And this, this Clipper team in the playoffs can be very dangerous. They, they have, like you guys have said, a lot of depth. Great defensive players. Yes. A lot of versatile guys also. Yeah. They're like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, that can play multiple positions. Yep. A great coach. Yeah, so I don't... Other than the Clipper curse. Like, like TJ, <laughs> TJ, TJ but it's Saga, real, man. I believe in the curse of Michael Olakandi. Candy. And uh, I just... in Sterling, obviously, I just... I understand, TJ. I understand. <laughs> it's just hard, I get man. It. I get it, TJ. But I want I it to be true. To, I do. I think, TJ, that you this year just need to believe in your heart that good things will happen for your teams. Hey, look, I'm, I'm always going to show up and yeah, show absolutely. out for them. But, like, at the same point, it's like, yeah, you know, I did get kicked once too often. Let the past be the past. And, that, and that, by the way, that's totally fair. So, all right, so we're looking for big things from the but Clippers. Yeah, I, I will say this. The one thing that I'm a little worried is is, is our big uh, situation. You know, we got Zubat. Yeah. We don't really have Zubat's another tough. big, but you know, I, I realize the NBA is getting away from the big man, but we're not the Warriors. We're not a three point shooting team, right? So I just kind of look at what happens if we get to the finals and we get a matchup with uh, Giannis, no last name, or uh, Joel Embiid, or even, you know, with Joker, like to yeah. get to there. So I'm a little, I think our, our big man situation, I'm a little like iffy about, but man. Other than that, this I'd, I'd like. This. It's funny too, and you look at the rest of the West. I mean, we haven't even mentioned Luca, Dallas. We haven't even mentioned them yet. Uh, we haven't even talked about. You just mentioned Joker. Denver's going to be back. Jamal Murray's Jamal back. Murray. Michael Alex, Porter Jr. My, MPJ. I back. love Jamal Murray, man. So I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing that and dude. I, I miss. I miss watching him last God, year. God, if you listen and help, let him stay healthy. Him and Kawhi. I miss watching know. him play last year after his you know bubble breakout. And we'll go to the Timberwolves. They made a huge trade. They acquire Rudy Gobert. And we're, and we're interested to see how that's going to play out. And Anderson, you know, Anthony, uh, Edwards, yeah. Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo. They still have a really fun young team. Yep. People are expecting big things from Sacramento this year. Dame Willard is back, guys. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the Phoenix Suns. Kind of one of the biggest question marks coming into the Very year. Much because so. they've dominated the regular season now two years in a row after they nearly won the NBA title two years ago. Last year, they had the best record in the NBA. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre, they still have all these guys. But you got to worry, right? Because you I know, don't know what they're going to look like. I think we kind of know what they're going to look like. They're going to have a good regular season. They and showed then... us. But now you got to worry about, like, DeAndre Ayton didn't get the money he wanted, right? And he and apparently Monty had not spoken. Right. And I don't know if that's a normal thing to not speak to your coach or your players the entire offseason. I'm done guessing. I'm the one who thinks it's bad to punch out your teammates. Yeah, so I don't but, know. <laughs> but it doesn't seem like, you know, like you and I, we talk we talk a few times after work per week. And, like, we might go a weekend and we don't speak. Right. That's fine. But, like, the way those two were coming back, it was like, yeah, I didn't talk to them. I, you know, I just wanted to leave exactly. them. Exactly. So, so there's weird. something like – there's something – and, I, you know, there's something I think I, I coined this phrase here last year, and I'm going to say it again because I love it. I think the only thing pH balanced in that locker room might be the shampoo. I don't know. We're going to yeah. see. Uh, is Aiton going to be salty? Or is he going to be able to put, you know, his benching and his contract behind him? And then you have, you know, the situation with their team owner, who it turns oh, out that gosh, he's a real right. piece of work. Of you know, we'll, we'll see. And how does Chris Paul find himself in this situation again with another owner who, you know, is uh, kind of a trash human being. I hope I, you know. That this is too bad. I mean, I would love to see Chris Paul get that ring. It just doesn't look like it's ever. Man, uh, we, in that know, one year happen. for like two games, it was like, oh, man, he's going to do this. He's gonna and do then this, Giannis man. was like, and nah. Then and, then, and then the weird thing, how Luka murdered their franchise in the playoffs last year. Yeah, like, it, do you come back from that? Like, I, 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 I kind of don't think so. I mean, if you just look out the rest of these teams that are on the rise, is Phoenix a top four team? Where do they finish? Could they maybe slip into the play in? I mean, obviously the Clippers are going to be there. Denver's going to be better. Golden State, uh, we're expecting Memphis. We haven't even mentioned them yet. Oh, That's man. four. That's the top four right there. I say that again. Does Phoenix break through there? If Memphis, Clippers, Clippers Nuggets, Warriors. Okay. 
I don't see – that's kind of the top four in my mind when I look at the West. And I then can, you got New Orleans. Could they break through? Dallas, Minnesota is a playoff team. Utah is obviously tanking. Is Portland back? <laughs> is Sacramento? I mean, it's going to be wild. It's wide open, man. Yeah, I could see the Suns in like the four to five range. I could see them being better than Memphis, but absolutely I do not think they're better than the Warriors, yep. than, the, uh, than the Clippers. And then the Nuggets, to me, are probably the third team in the West right now. They're, they're going to be so fun to watch. So that, fun to watch. That bubble year with Jamal Murray going off was so fun. And now you have a healthy Michael Porter Jr., yep. who I think can be a 20-point scorer in the league easily all day. If, if he's healthy. The guy's oh, never yeah. – yeah. because healthy, it's his right. back. And when yeah. it's your back, as I can attest to now, because I'm in pain as we speak, man, when your back goes, bro, ew, it, 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 it's tough. It's tough. So Aaron Gordon, a guy they they you know made a deal for last year. They have KCP now mm-hmm. and Bruce Brown playing you know defense and getting in there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, but even Joker said it's going to take Jamal like twenty games to like. Well, you I mean yeah. you know, it, and it will. It's kind of the same thing with John Wall. When you haven't played in a real shake off long that rust. time, you really it takes a while to get to get back used to playing. Okay, let's look at the East real quick because as crazy as the West is. The East is just stacked, and it's going to be – it's new, fun teams, right? Yeah. It's well, – Well, you're old school, and then you got some – Yeah, new. you got the old school teams, but then you got, you know, the Hawks made a huge deal in the offseason getting to Jonte Murray. Uh, Chicago is going to be right there. Cleveland is going to be a team. People are expecting a lot of things. The Pistons are going to be fun yeah. to and watch again. The Heat will always be in the mix. Heat will always be in the mix. Brooklyn, we are finally going to see what this big three of theirs looks Brooklyn, like Brooklyn. tonight, Adam. What do you look at with aside from your own team? What are you looking at in the East? TJ, yeah. I love the 76ers right now. And this team is so well rounded. Even though they lost last night, I loved how well James Harden played. And James Harden legitimately looks good. Looks, looks like he's in shape for the first time in his career. <laughs> well, at least three years, probably. But he yeah, he he looks like he did you guys see that video? There's a video of James Harden where he got a, a huge birthday cake for his birthday. Oh, yeah, and he threw and he, it off the he boat. he chucks it off the boat. And that's just, like, kind of showed, like... That was disrespectful he, to the chef. But, <laughs> that cake looked good. It did look really good, but you got to make some sacrifices. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so that team... Adam, he didn't think about the rest of the people who wanted cake, though. That that was just wrong. Was yeah, they're saying. getting champagne. They're getting whatever <laughs> else he brings to the table. They're, they're going to be fine. Uh, but you look at that team, and you have Maxi, who I think is developing him into a, a really – if he's your number three player in your team, that's a really good team because Tyrese Maxey is a 20-point-per-game scorer all day. People so, in the know are very high on Maxey. Yeah. Right? and so Very high on him. And then, of course, you add P.J. Tucker. So I'm, I'm looking at the Sixers as really – a potential final team. The only thing that concerns me is is Doc Rivers is their coach. Yeah, he's just been disappointing right. in right. so <laughs> many years, over and over. Just with these stacked teams, they don't live up to expectations. So yeah, they have. You know, they're going to be really good this year. So I'm looking at Philadelphia, and then of course, like you said, Cleveland. Cleveland's going to be really fun to watch. Yep. You have the backcourt of Darius Garland and and Donovan Mitchell. That's an explosive, fun backcourt to watch. And then, Evan Mobley was, you know, awesome last year. Yeah, and so I was going to say they're not the best defensive backcourt, but you make up for that by having Evan Mobley yep. and Jared Allen as your front court. So that team is is a well rounded team. I think they're probably still a little too young to really compete, but that's an an NBA league pass team you're going to want to watch. Yeah, no doubt. And, and look, Milwaukee's going to be there. I mean, they have five teams that could come out of here if you're looking at Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Miami. Philadelphia, Boston. And, Brooklyn, and Boston. Like that's a that is five, five teams you could make a case that could win the NBA title. It's so weird to me with Brooklyn because Brooklyn's the type of team that could either not make the playoffs or win the championship. Like that's yeah, like their, their, their ups absolutely. and downs based on injuries and mood swings and who knows what. And it, and it comes down. Oh sure, all of those things, but just basketball wise, like you need your shooters, right? So you need Joe Harris and you need Seth Curry, and they're out to kind of start the season. But if they come back and and shoot 40% clip from three, on top of having Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, I, I think we all kind of expect Ben Simmons to be kind of a 10-10-10 a guy this year and be in the defensive, you know, de- all defensive team. And he should. Mm-hmm. He's a guy who can play basketball. Look, we've seen it. it. You know, Last year, notwithstanding, the dude knows how to play and is a factor out there. And I, I kind of – 
I weirdly expect Brooklyn to be in the mix all season. You know, the top four team in the East, no doubt. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. TJ, what do you think about the 76ers? Our teams played last night. Uh, Boston kind of took it to them at home uh, on a Bill Russell night. That was really awesome and really special way to start the year for you uh, in Boston for me. <laughs> Um, Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum were awesome last night. 35 points, 35 each. Uh, and it was a good start. It was a bad, was a great start. For it you. was a bad night for the break up the J uh, break up the Jays crowd. Uh, but a great start for me. What did you see out of Philadelphia last night? Uh, that has you hopeful, uh, that this could finally be the year for you guys. Uh, what I saw last night that made me hopeful. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Really? I mean, look. James Harden didn't wasn't Here's excited. James Harden, wasn't, and wasn't, look, it's one game. I'm not ready to throw in the towel, but if you're asking me how I felt after one game, it's this. The defense was uh, – where was it? You have two guys putting up 70, right? And mind you, these are two exceptional basketball yeah. players. Um, I, as I said on the big show today, I my problem is I've got Joel Embiid, right, who – Two years ago, I said to you specifically, I'm like, I hope Joel was looking at all this Giannis NBA champion, you know, the videos, him and the Chick-fil-A, him just all, all the talk shows, him buying all the Oreos. And I was like, I just want him to see this and go, that can and that should be me. And I want him to just train and practice and just get to that that point, like Shaq said, just go out there and know you're not the best big man in the game. You're the best player in the game. So go out there and dominate. My problem being is you've got a seven foot, 280 pound man who hits the the ground seven, eight times a game, man. And for someone who's already a little injury prone, it just really, it kind of bugs me how much Joel finds himself falling and hitting the court. Because when you're that big, bro, and you're falling seven times a game, and I said this today, if he plays 70 games, that's 490 times that this two, almost 300-pound body is slamming into the ground, the energy picking yourself up, and you rinse, rush, repeat. He's got to stay on his feet. I, and, I, and I don't ever hear anyone else talking about that, but it's – have you noticed that? Because it's bothersome to me how much this guy hits the ground. I don't know if it's just he's straight flopping, and if that's the case, you've got to stop it, bro. Is it uncoordination? I don't know. But, like, stay on your feet, dog, because, you know, it's not going to take much to, you know, that big body's falling, you put your hand down. Next thing you know, broken wrist, yeah. broken finger. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing. But, you know, we got Harden who dribbled, I think, the stat I saw was like 520 times yesterday. Really? The entire team combined wow. had like 400 dribbles. Jeez, wow. So it's a lot of Harden dribbling around but shooting. that's what Harden does. That's what he does. But like, is that making a team better? Are we better? I don't know yet. Yeah, he I played well. He was efficient last night. Maxie's obviously a superstar yeah, but you know, I, in the making. But Adam brought something up. Yeah. Like, there's now guys with some real hard. Not that they didn't have it before. We got guys with hard on this team like P.J. Tucker. Yep. Dog. Montrez Harrell, dog. Yeah, and if P.J. Tucker right and Montrez Harrell are on the court at the same time, you know how like you have 50-50 balls? <laughs> they're going to well, get them all. They're like 80-20 yeah. with those two because they're going to dive. They're going to get the loose balls. They're going to fight. So I like that component of the team. But like, you know, a bunch of dribbling and shooting, it kind of seems like where we left off before. So I need to see a little bit more. I need Joel to just like, bro, 23 feet away from the hoop. Why, dog? Get down. Get your big ass down in that basket. I know, but this Use is Use those broad shoulders. This is like year four of him playing this type of game. I just, I... So that that part about it, just yeah. it's fresh. Because I'm an old school basketball fan. Man. I love the big man. And I know we've gotten away right. from that. But, bro, when you're a, like Shaq, when you're that big, give me the ball in the post. I'm going to put these shoulders into somebody. And after three or four times, they ain't going to want to like bone mm -hmm. up with you anymore. And then get busy down there, man. Shooting these 30-foot jumpers. Come on, dog. All right, I Adam, like that. Adam, talk to me about your Bulls before we uh, give some predictions and round this up. Cat Patrick Williams needs to be aggressive this year. I think that's the key to the Bulls season. He has so much talent, so much ability, but every single year, the last couple of years, he's just been a guy that's just so passive. He stands in the corner and does nothing. So he needs to realize <laughs> that he has a lot of talent and he just needs to be aggressive. He needs to shoot 15 times a game minimum. So Patrick Williams is key for the Bulls. Duke the big pro the big problem with with the Bulls is the health right is now is the right? health of Lonzo Ball. Yeah. So originally last year everybody was saying, oh yeah, he'll be great by the start of the season. Now you're hearing rumors that 
Lonzo Ball might not even play the whole year. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, right? yeah, they, yeah. They, they're, they're keep being setbacks every single time I read a news update about him. That's going to hurt your squad. And man. that's a huge problem because yeah. – when the Bulls were good, the Bulls were really good in the regular season last year. Especially when at the healthy. beginning, Adam. Yeah. When Caruso exactly. was getting like six steals a game before yeah. he got hurt, and Lonzo was, you know, yeah, dropping Bulls dimes were, like a snitch. Bulls, oh, wow. Yeah, Bulls were, Lonzo, man. Bulls were at the top Lonzo of the good. East. They were, yeah, they were at the top of the East with Lonzo leading the way. And without his defense, without his court awareness, Io DeSumo is a good point guard, but he's not even close to what Lonzo is. So if the Bulls don't have Lonzo... For the majority of the season, I don't think we're going to be as good as last year. And then playoffs, forget about it. We won't. We, we might make the playoffs, but it'll be an easy first round exit. So Lonzo needs to get healthy. And then apparently now Zach Levine's yeah, he's going to be out for the next I think couple he's out games. Tonight, yeah. So he's always a guy that worries me with the injuries. Another guy that I really like. I like his game a lot. He's improved every single year, but the injuries are an issue. So a lot comes down with the Bulls with, with the injuries, and then Patrick Williams needs to be aggressive. If all goes according to plan and Patrick Williams is aggressive and, and we get Lonzo at least halfway through, I think the Bulls can can be a, a second round team that can beat competes with with uh, the Sixers or the Bucks. Ultimately, ends up losing. I don't think we're we're in the top tier yet, but I think we can compete and be a second round type of team. So that's what I see for the Bulls this year. Love it, Celtics. Yeah, let's hear about yeah, it. Let's hear. It's title or bust. I mean, that's it. When you when you're two wins away from the NBA championship and now you got everybody back, you add Malcolm Brogdon in the offseason. I think you saw it last night, TJ, what a difference he is out yeah. there. Just a calming influence on that second unit. He's able to score. I think he would he have sixteen last night. Uh he's able to put the ball in the basket and he's able to lead. And I think that's huge. Obviously not having Robert Williams for the what it looks like now the first half of the year. Time Lord. Jeez, that's uh, that's kind of devastating defensively. I think yeah. you saw it last night. Gave up, what, 117 to Philadelphia. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a different second half look when he is back out there. But when you see him out there at full strength, again, we're two wins away from the championship. So, uh, Tatum, I, I expect Tatum to be in the MVP discussion all year long. Both of you, both of us picked him to win MVP. Yeah, in he's the an absolute today. superstar. He's first team all NBA last year. And I think you saw the full compliment of his repertoire last night, what he's able to do. Um, he had double-digit rebounds, yeah. uh, 35, 35 points. 12, so four dimes. It, it's, it, it's, the sky's the limit for him. And, and Jalen Brown, I know he's in a critical year for him, but you saw him come out really aggressive. I think what killed, this, what killed the Celtics in the, in, the, in the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals last year, turnovers. Jalen Bra- yeah. Brown had a bajillion of them, so did Tatum. Uh, but that's why you get a guy like Malcolm Brogdon. You have you only had Smart, ten last night. Work on that in the off season, and that's huge. Keep that number at at that number. Keep that turnovers at ten or below, and I think we're going to see a lot of wins. No reason why the Celtics can't win sixty games this year, uh, be the one seed, and win the championship. I mean, I think it's all about Banner eighteen, and I think this is the team to do it, despite everything that happened kind of at the end of the summer, which was super bizarre, super weird. We still don't know anything really about what's going on with Ime Udoka, but... Losing Gallinari was, was difficult. And losing also. Gallinari that was kind of difficult because... But you he, never had him to start with. Never him. had him to begin so. with, but the anticipation of, man, he's going to be that guy. 20 minutes. He's going to make three or four threes a night. He's going to come up with eight boards, and he's going to have those one or two hustle plays that he's used to having. But nice to see Grant Williams step up. He had a great game last three night. Three and three. we showed what he could do uh, during the playoff run. As well, so but Chris, I will high say, expectations for Boston this year, and I think that's super realistic. I, but I say this, right? You you say play championship or bust, but the coach that situation is a big thing because we know what Eme did. We knew the way that he he big time changed the team, culture, man. Changed the culture. Yeah. He kind of challenged these guys. Yeah. He kind of told them to stop playing like asses. He would yeah. get up in his face, their face because he'd been there and done it. Yeah. He won a ring and stop being bullied. Don't let Miami bully yeah. you. Don't let Philadelphia get in your so, face. Like and you could see it last night. They really stood up to you guys. Yeah. And um, so, but you know, it's one I'm of those sorry, things. Your coach's name is just I just completely uh, just, Joe Missoula. Yeah, Joe Missoula. We I don't. I mean, obviously, we didn't know what Eme could Nobody do really as a head coach, him, but we don't but. know what Joe Missoula is going to bring to the table. Is he going to have that same effect where they listen to him the same way that they did Eme? So, you know, talent wise. It's all and, there. And construction, it's there. Yeah. You just got to see how, like, if, if this guy can do the job, then, yeah, you're going to be right back there. Well, but One, thing, one thing I did like in the preseason and, and last night uh, with Joe in charge is we're playing a little faster. 
Okay. Went a little faster, a little more up, a little more tempo. It's funny you say that. Because and, and 126 points last night, that's a lot. It's funny you said that because Barkley said it, and I was thinking the same thing. Sixers just, they play slow, man. It's yeah. just like, hey, well, when just, you, like when you said, when, dribble, when, dribble, dribble. when it's 20 seconds of James dribbling the ball around, and then either he's shooting a step back or it's going in Joel, it's, you know, that's tough, but... Yeah. Like I said, high hopes. High hey, hopes for Boston. We're, so we'll basketball's see. back, and that's the important. Basketball's thing. back. We're really excited. Real quick, round the horn. TJ and I gave ours. I like the Celtics over the Warriors. Uh, <laughs> TJ is just <laughs> pulling for a Clippers Sixers finals. Before I die. Before <laughs> Adam, I leave this Adam, earth, Lord. Please. Adam, what do you think? What's your finals? Who wins as we get out the door? So I have the Warriors coming out of the Western Conference. I'm going to go against my gut and say that the Philadelphia 76ers really? win the Eastern Conference this wow. year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I God, think, if you're listening. Wow. <laughs> I think Let they, Adam they get right. it together. And we have to keep in mind that James Harden has not played on this team for very long. Right. So they This will is technically tell, the 24th regular season yeah. game that he's been eligible for. Wow. Yeah. So they so. have a whole season to gel. I really like their team. I love the addition of P.J. Tucker. Dog. And Tobias Harris is the fourth player. Yeah, they have a bunch of dogs <laughs> on the team. Embiid, you know Embiid's hungry. Yeah, he flops all the time. Yeah, he, he plays Adam, outside. I did not say flop. All right? <laughs> I did not use that word. He okay. wanted to. Yeah. He wanted to. He avoided it so hard. <laughs> um, no, but but I really like Philadelphia. Like I said, Doc Rivers, uh, not so much. But at the same time, he did, oh, lead, he did lead a team to a championship. We, Can't take we that have away to, from We him. have to admit that. That was a good-ass team, though, too. Very good. good. But this is a good-ass team also. So I like the Warriors and the Sixers, and I have the Golden State Warriors repeating as a 2023 NBA wow. champions. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something. If the Warriors do repeat, then I'm making Embiid punch everybody next season. Just everyone on the team's getting jawed. All right, think about this for next <laughs> week. If the Warriors do repeat, Steph passes LeBron on the all-time list, right? Man, no, let's not get into that. Right All right, now. that's going to do it for this <laughs> hey, week. Wait, hey, before we go, the though, NBA I, podcast is back. Before we go, though, I want to talk to you guys because, you know, last year we were so big on winning time, right? We love winning time. I was I've, I don't know if you guys have started, but I've started watching Legacy on Hulu about the Lakers. I haven't seen. I heard it's great. Though. Man, let me tell you something. It's thoroughly entertaining. The, the footage that I've never seen before. Some of the cool stuff is like. You never saw a picture of Jerry Buss before the day he bought the Lakers, right? So now you're getting to see, like, 29, 30 year old Jerry Buss, and you're like, oh, wow, this dude was actually young. And then you get to see, like, all the kids as babies. So I just like how this came out after Winning Time was so popular. Yeah. And they and were had like, everyone uh, thinking about the Lakers one way. And then the, the Lakers were like, oh, we need to put out an actual documentary <laughs> because everyone thinks all this stuff was real. But here's the deal, right? What I realized is when, it, and we can talk about legacy throughout the, the course of, of, of the season. I won't be watching it. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> bro, if you watch Winning Time, it is so definitely worth a watch. But here's one thing. John C. Rowley, we knew he did a great job as Dr. Buss, right? But he kind of played him more of as, as a caricature or a funny guy. Like, you kind of forget Dr. Buss. I, I want to throw around the word genius, but this dude was so intelligent. Yeah. He was this, the moves he made. He was so smart. Mm -hmm. And to the point where like Jeannie would say like her dad would like talk about numbers and stats. And he would you go in his office and Michael Cooper even said, or I'm sorry, Byron Scott said he had a desk raised a little higher than you when you came in his office. Real boss type move. But Jeannie was like, dad had a calculator on his desk. She goes, and it wasn't for him. It was for anyone that was in there to use so they could keep up with him because that's how his mind worked and that's how good he was at numbers. So it was just like, man, this dude, you can say all you want about being a playboy and all that other stuff. Oh, Jerry Buss was genius, man. The man, the man traded buildings for, for a building and two franchises. Like, it, it, it was amazing. And I think I'm on episode four now, so we've kind of got through Showtime and now Kareem has just... Uh, retired, and then they drafted Vlade, so that's where I'm at now. But I'm thoroughly enjoying Legacy, man, and I, I definitely recommend and, you guys And you hate watching. the Lakers. That's funny. But here's the deal, Chris. Back in those in the 80s, though, I did not dislike the Lakers because I was not I was a Sixers fan. I didn't like the Celtics. So when the Lakers-Celtics played, I kind of always went with the Lakers. So I can remember, like, yeah, I used to like these guys back in the day, but definitely worth worth watching. I'm telling you, it's it's, it's really good. All right, everybody, that's it. Thanks for joining us. We're back. The Rich Eisen Show basketball podcast every Wednesday throughout the NBA season here on YouTube and on Westwood One. Thank you for everyone, and thank you for tuning in. TJ Adam, enjoy the games tonight. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, we'll see you guys. Later. Peace.